Abstract is more than just a build tracker. We're really trying to innovate on how people take in information from the legislature, collaborate both internally and externally with people, and then take action on that bill information. So we started it as a senior project, which I can explain about more later. Yeah. Uh, but really, we're trying to innovate in this space, but in the end, make government more transparent. That's our ultimate mission. Hello and welcome again to another episode of Sacktown Talks. Today, we're glad to be joined by Patrick Utz and Chris McKaylee again to talk a little bit about Abstract. Guys, thanks for joining the program. How's it going? Thanks for having us. Good. Yeah. yeah. So Abstract, it's a it's a new technology. Kind of tell our listeners kind of what, what's it about and kind of how's it work? Definitely. So um, essentially, Abstract is more than just a build tracker. We're really trying to innovate on how people take in information from the legislature, collaborate both internally and externally with people, and then take action on that bill information. So we started it as a senior project, which I can explain about more later. Yeah. Uh, but really we're trying to innovate in this space, but in the end, make government more transparent. That's our ultimate mission. Right. And Chris, you know, how did you get involved in it? You know, what's your interest in this? Well, actually, a client of mine introduced us, connected me with Patrick, and so he sort of talked through what they were working on and how I might help them. And as you know, I'm a lover of the process right. and, uh, you know, teaching at McGeorge and at King Hall at Davis, you know, I have a real desire to pass that information along. And so they were looking for someone who could both advise them as to how the process works right. and things that they should include in their system. But then also we've uh, worked on some written and uh, video tutorials that their subscribers can actually utilize to find out about what does gut and amend mean. Right. Uh, we talked earlier about the 72 hour rule. So you yep. can click on that tutorial to understand what oh, that cool. is. So, you know, it, it's funny. I was just watching, you know, the show with Westworld and they're talking about oh, artificial yeah. intelligence yeah. and it's like, what's the perfect kind of system technology, artificial intelligence you could do? It would be to take Chris McKelly and, <laughs> and digitize him. And yeah. So is that your plan? Uh, yes. It's, it's on, it's on the product roadmap. Uh, it took about 20 years. But we'll, It'd be uh, pretty we'll scary. There, yeah. That would be scary. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't go uh, to the dark side on us. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Start thinking for itself. Right. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, what, what made you take an interest in this and start, you know, forming this type of technology? Like, you know, yeah. I guess that a lot of people are looking at technology, disruptive technologies. Uh, politics is, is not often one spot you see people focus on kind of what drew you in and wanted to start working on this. Yeah. So let's see. I, uh, originally I was, so I studied electrical engineering, computer science. Um, I have two other co-founders, uh, the other one also electrical engineering, computer science. And then the last one, he's kind of a dark horse. He just came from marketing, mm -hmm. um, knew him from high school. Uh, sorry. I knew him from middle school. Uh, so none of us came from the lobbying space, but we were all really passionate about government politics, um, for, at least for, for myself, uh, my, my family's from Argentina. My dad actually came here to be a politician, um, learned English and actually never went back to Argentina and never became a politician. But yeah. regardless, <laughs> uh, you know, we'd still have those conversations at home. Um, and so naturally, uh, my junior year of college, I was starting to think, okay, well, I don't really know what's going on uh, with, with the law and the bills. And actually, I don't remember the last time I read a bill. And wait, these are the bills that turn into laws that govern my life and govern my family's business and right. and everyone really. And why isn't it easier to understand what's what's going on with these bills? And so that was the initial, I would say, pain point that begged the question, okay, how can we take these algorithms that we are now developing, these AI algorithms to summarize information and apply that to bills and legislation? So that was the genesis around abstract. That's why it's called abstract. We right. want to make abstract summaries of bills, um, which I can talk about that later. But that's how it it started. Yeah. So you know we have Legend Info, we have Capital Track, and if, if you're not so fortunate, you may have StateNet. Kind of Chris, what <laughs> what are some of the holes you see in the existing technologies uh, that could be, I guess, you know, leveled up to make a, a better experience for lobbyists out there? Well, I think some of the things that have jumped out at me is uh, timeliness. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the limitations of some of them. In other words, there ought to be many more features available. Mm -hmm. I think we definitely learned some of those things when we were struggling through the pandemic, uh, having greater access. The other thing is, is that I don't know if many people are aware, but the wonderful LIS, Legislative Information System, that's public facing right. is not as robust as the internal one. Perhaps rightfully so. I don't know. I'll leave that to others to decide. But so the ones that legislative staff utilize have several more options right. uh, that are available, whether it's searching or, you know, tracking. Certainly the information is provided in a more timely fashion. And so having that sort of stuff available, I've also found errors. I don't know how many times over the years in which uh, other lobbyists or uh, ledge assistants reach out and say, hey, uh, this is showing, you know, AB123 on the floor. I thought that was still in committee. Yes, it actually is, but it's been misreported and stuff. So, right. I mean, you want timely and 100% accurate information because you're relying upon it. Your clients are. A lot of what Abstract will hopefully do is also the ability to share and interact. In other mm -hmm. words, you might pull down a bill and I could you know, highlight some information like, you know, these specific provisions might be of interest and immediately send it to a client who can utilize the same document and send back responses. And then from that, we could dump it into a letter of support mm -hmm. or opposition, et cetera, right. feeding off that original uh, document. So those are some of the things that I certainly see them doing. Yeah. And, and Chris, and, you're known, you know, you give uh, updates on kind of bill counts, kind of what, where things are headed. Um, do you rely on, on technology or do you score this individually? <laughs> well, I guess technology in the sense of the internet, right. but no, I'm a physical counter. Really? I, yeah. I still love, uh, you know, I always joke, my wife reads books on her phone, right. <laughs> you know, and I still like the paper in my hands. Yeah. Granted, we all read newspapers, maybe a dozen or more these days on the internet, mm -hmm. but certainly the daily files, I like generally pick them up every day. I like to rifle through them. Certainly when the assembly and Senate's on the floor. I use them, check off. They did this bill or didn't. So yeah, I'm still a hand counter. Were I think. you one of the last people to have a mailbox in the bill room? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, I can remember one of my first bosses. We used to fight over who could look at the stack of new bills mm -hmm. first because he liked them crisp off the right. printer, you know? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I remember as an intern, that was one of my jobs, taking the bills, putting them in the binder and then putting it away. Right. Even though nobody looked at them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> doing it, doing it. So, you know, coming into the space, you know, kind of yeah. looking at the existing technology, what what do you think some of the areas of, of improvement that you see that Abstract can do Oh yeah, that uh, the existing technologies come? And, and kind of like Chris pointed out, like yeah. there is, you know, I guess a level of information that staff have that's a little better. Totally. Um, is there a way for the public to kind of have a similar experience. Definitely. So I guess there's a lot of areas I can touch on here, but I'm kind of focusing on the main uh, pieces. So first of all, it's taking information that already exists and then pulling insights from that that are valuable. What do I mean by that? Uh, support and opposition. Uh, a lot of people that we talk to want to know, okay, I have this organization I care about, like the Association of Retail, uh, Re Realtors. I want to know what are the bills that they support or oppose in real time. Well, in order to do that, you have to go through every committee analysis, see what's the registered support and opposition, and write that down manually. Well, mm -hmm. we built an algorithm that automated all of that. And now in two clicks, you can say, okay, I care about the association of realtors. Show me all the bills that they support or oppose. And you know what? Set alerts to tell me anytime uh, the registrant supports something, let me know, right? So these are things that we've been able to automate that doing manually would take forever, right? Right. Um, beyond that, using AI for gut and amend, uh, that's something that we've also developed that is unique and more real time than having someone manually check if something's been gut and amended. And then beyond that, really, it's, it's this idea of making things, uh, you know, more on the go, more easy to collaborate and work with your clients. So, uh, I don't know if I can show it here, but, uh, we have a mobile app actually now. And so let's say you're walking around the Capitol, at least for partners of firms, they can now take notes on abstract. Um, add tags and labels and use that on the go, right? Not having to be tied to their, their desktop. Right. Um, so the idea of mobility, uh, you know, insights, and then be able to collaborate with their team. That's, these are things that we've been focusing on. 
Yeah, it's interesting. Like so much, I guess, information is out there, right? You have yeah. printed bills, you have committee hearings that are all recorded, mm-hmm. um, you know, have subtitles, things like that. Um, I guess what is the challenge to kind of you have all this information out there to amass all this stuff and make it, I guess, searchable and accessible? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, and you're saying like what what's like the envision of that? Or yeah, what? or envision or like, you know, how is like the processing power and just oh, know, totally. it's like a constantly expanding universe, right? Yeah. So I think this this is where our kind of, you know, uh, secret sauce comes in, mm-hmm. which is most of our team uh, is data engineers. We're, we're focused heavily on data, and that's because the co-founders, we come from an engineering background. Right. And so all of the algorithms we have are modern OCR, which is stands for object character recognition, which is, you know, taking the PDFs and extracting the text, and then using AI to process that information and make it useful. So all of this is done in the cloud. Uh, we use Amazon Web Services, uh, which that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, but essentially using that computing power to to process all the information and really not having a human check any of it other than some redundancies here and there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so like you have a kind of an impressive board of advisors and founders. Mm-hmm. You have Tony Coelho, the ex-congressman. Yeah. I guess you have the founder of MTV. Yeah. Uh, Jerome, kinda, <laughs> how did you build this network and get them interested in the, the product? That is a, that's a great question. I, I would say it all comes down to our mission. Um, I think over the last two years, we've been very honest about what we're trying to accomplish. And naturally, that's resonated with all these people who have taken that mission of making lobbying more accessible, taking making government more transparent and you know, coming along with us for the ride. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's the common thread across all of our advisors and, and investors. Yeah. You know, COVID-19 has totally changed lobbying. Uh, you know, we have a, a situation now where, you know, we have a new building, uh, you know, staff and committees are all over the place. Yeah. Um, you know, we were just joking the other day about how you used to go over and physically walk letters over. Uh, now people are doing, using more email, but staff's emails are getting overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> kind of how, how do you see kind of technology kind of helping in this kind of era of, of kind of this new world where, you know, people are remote and not, you know, not, you know, available in person anymore. Totally. So one of the things that actually I might as well just show it. So um, you won't be able to see it too well on the camera, but this is abstract on the phone. And so one of the ways uh, that we want to, you know, solve those issues is having everything just digitized on, in the palm of your hands, easy to access. Um, and then beyond that, it's streamlining how you communicate, right? So we realized that a lot of communication in this industry is back and forth emails, email chains upon email chains, mm-hmm. Word documents that have red lines. Why don't you put that all in one place, right? Right. And so, you know, Chris was talking about this earlier, but the ability, ability to pick out lines in a bill and leave comments for that is something unique to our platform. Uh, being able to have all that commentary in one place and share that with your clients back and forth. Yeah, you know, it was funny. Like I had uh, someone ask me the other day, like, do you have everyone's email address? Like if I wanted to email like all 120 offices to not let them know our position, like, do you have that, you know, pre-made email? And I was like, no, I, I don't have the, you know, yeah. the staff of everyone in the issue. Um, is that something like you could do or you would even see? Yeah. yeah, I mean, we have the data. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have all the staffer contact information. Now, whether or not we would want to let somebody email everyone right. at once all the time, right. we'd have to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> we yes. give that email. ability to, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool if you could be like email committee, email, you know, that'd mm-hmm. be cool. Um, kind of, I know you've done a lot of re. I guess, outreach to like lobbyists, you know, I know you're up here all the time talking to different players in the industry. I kind of, what kind of feedback have you gotten? Yeah. And you know, how, how has that been helpful in kind of developing the platform? That that's a great question. Um, in terms of feedback, uh, I would say a lot of the feedback we got last time we came here was actually, well, it hinged around mobile. So it was the inability to walk around and, take the information that you had on your, because a lot of people use Capital Track or Ledge Info, right? Mm-hmm. Take that information and take it on the go. Or they had PDFs and they have to pinch and zoom to f- see what what's going on, right? So a lot of the feedback we got was like, hey, like I can't work on this while I'm walking. And and now we're back in session, right? So we're in person, right? Mm-hmm. So- but well, some of us have very long walks to the swing space. That too. <laughs> you lost weight, Chris. <laughs> Steps in, huh? I wish. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that mobility aspect, I think, was was a big piece. Um, and then the the other piece is is more around uh, how can we, 
you know, tell better stories or connect with our clients better because that's that's where the value is uh, for a lot of, of these lobbyists. So mm-hmm. we're, we're thinking really hard about how we can make the absolute best reports that go beyond just PDFs. Um, and that's going to be our next update, which mm-hmm. I'll keep under wraps. But uh, that reporting function was something that was really key. Yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the best things with abstract is, is that they've really tried to build a system that lobbyists, government affairs officials and staff will be able to utilize and really have worked with them to say what's missing with current systems and what do you need to make your life easier to interact with, whether it's your clients or legislative staff, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and I was going to real focus. I was going to add to that. Uh, we've done, we've we've almost to insanity <laughs> uh, have have talked with hundreds of people in terms of what's the, especially what's the data that you need? What's the data you have on capital track that you don't find elsewhere, but what's data that capital track doesn't have? What's data that state net has that others don't have, right? There's all these solutions that have been around for a while, but mm-hmm. we can all agree that no one solution ha- truly has all the, all the data right. uh, needed. So that's been a huge focus of ours yeah. and, and timeliness, like Chris mentioned earlier. So how, how many years have you been working on this now? Yeah, so it's been quick. It's uh, we, we started, uh, let's see, we started working full time May of 2020. So it's uh, it's going to be, yeah, two years. Timely. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I guess, like, you know, what's the state of your platform now? And is it is it live, ready to go? Is it, you know, yeah. ready to take subscribers and things like that? So we had pilots uh, for, for a long time until February of this year. Um, and then starting March of this year, we actually opened up the platform for people to actually subscribe. It's a, it's a monthly subscription model, um, similar to what you find with other platforms. Sure. Um, and I would say the last two years, yeah, have been a roller coaster because uh, we went from three of us working out of our parents' bedroom to now we're a team of 10 people. Uh, we raised uh, two and a half million dollars. Right. And we have 30 paying customers. Uh, nice. Lobbying firms, associations. Right. And the mix. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I guess it, it's interesting. So something we talk a lot about is kind of how technology is changing, how things are being lobbied, whether it's, you know, social media, podcasts, um, you know, email, things like yeah. that. Kind of how do you see, I guess, technology influencing lobbying in the future and, and how abstract can be a part of that? That's a great question. Well, Chris, do you have any thoughts on that? On tech and <laughs> Well, as you indicate, <laughs> I think especially during the pandemic, we've figured out how reliant we have to become whether i mean today we're still doing zooming uh, lobbying meetings i've got a number of afternoon appointments in person at the swing space but all this morning from eight to a little before 11 was on zoom lobby meetings with both legislators and staff so whether it's zoom email we've long utilized of course especially to share data i mean i still it's sort of like having you know the physical copy of the daily file in my hand i'm still uh a uh, big believer of the in person, but you know, technology, whether it's pulling up a bill that you're talking about, or sometimes, uh, you know, you run out of fact sheets for the day and you say, well, here, I'll just email it. There are a lot of staff and legislators who prefer electronic copies. And as I'm sure you're aware, there's at this point a good half a dozen or more offices that have a sign that says we are paperless. Right. <laughs> You know, no meeting requests, no fact sheets, no advocacy letters, no nothing in paper. We want it all electronically. So uh, clearly with every passing day. um, We're having a hologram. Exactly. (laughs) Too bad we can't be on multiple floors and in multiple committees at the same time. But yeah, I mean, clearly technology plays an ever growing role in our daily lives. And certainly that's mm-hmm. flowed into lobbying as well. So it has, yeah. it's interesting. It seems like the letter has been the tried and true way of, of lobbying for the longest time. Yes. And now it mm. seems like it's kind of losing relevance a bit. Um, or, you know, I was talking, mm-hmm. working an issue and they're like, you know, we're talking about a, a letter and they're like, yeah, go ahead, send a letter. No one's going to read it. No one's going to wow. see it. It's just going to get lost in the pile <laughs> yeah. of letters. Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you know, with that and, you know, emails pulling up, like how, how do you be effective today in, in lobbying and kind of, um, you know, in a paperless world, you know, it's difficult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, clearly you have to have at least a few talking points that you can at least send electronically, <clears throat> but perhaps, you know, there will be greater utilization of 
the advocacy letters in analyses and elsewhere, you know, that the, the uh, internal LIS system now for legislators and staff, you don't have to compile those binders, right, for committee mm-hmm. hearings or the floor with all of the letters mm-hmm. support and oppose. Right. They just click on, you know, California Chamber of Commerce, click on it and up pops their letter. So now they all have it on their desk computer right there at the assembly and senate desks which which, which reminds me if anyone in the audience is interested in joining our initiative to make a open database of letters feel free to reach out because uh, we're actually trying to work what does that mean yeah yeah so we're going to try we're working with um trying to work with assembly member cooley to uh, make a database that's open to the public with all the letters uh, that people submit um and so the letters are there they're in the senate they're in the assembly but it's just hard to act. You can't, there's no s- database that you can access directly. Right. Um, the only place that it's available is in member portfolio um, in the assembly. So um, if anyone is interested in joining our effort, and that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's going to that make them publicly open. available. In other words, staff or members, as I was saying, right. can click on it and it pulls up the letter, but you and I would go and get the official analysis and see these five groups in support Mm-hmm. But we'd have to contact them or the legislator's office or yep. somebody, and they might have it in PDF. They might fax it over to you or whatever. Fax it. <laughs> right. But here you could actually it's click just click. like the staff right. does and pull up the actual letter. And we want to make that free and open to everyone. But then, of course, we want to use that and also integrate it with our product. So if right. anyone yeah. uses Abstract and you pull up a bill, you'll have the actual letters that were submitted for that bill in one place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I guess in terms of the the technological innovation that we see in the next decade, you know, um, I think it's it's going to hinge around insights, uh, better collaboration and storytelling. So insights, right? Taking this data, this information, and giving you insights that previously were really hard to to create manually. Like like what I said with the registered support and opposition, mm-hmm. right? Um, that's something that would take forever doing manually. Now with a button, you can pull up all the registered support and opposition, right? Um, and then collaboration, using technology to get rid of all that noise of back and forth emails, um, Word documents here and there, having all that collaboration in one place to not only save time, but be more effective about what you're working on with the people. Right. Um, and the last piece uh, is storytelling, which is how can you then take all that data and then quickly make a beautiful report or maybe even make a beautiful video um, that is automated but it looks nice. It's easier to digest. Mm-hmm. So that's where I see tech really, you know, pushing the frontier in the next decade. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Like on, on all, some of these systems, you can create client reports and they just send this mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, spew of bill numbers yep. and like little, <laughs> and like little facts about the bill. And I always think like a client looks at this, like they're just like overwhelmed. They don't know what, they don't know yep. what it is. And I was like, Oh, can you like give us more information about this and that? Kind of like, you know, what what can your abstract do in that kind of client report world that makes, I guess, a better quality uh, client report than just like, here's the bill. Here's like the first couple sentences of the digest. Yeah, I would say in terms of what I can talk about now, because that, that mm-hmm. is being worked on currently. Yeah. Uh, let's just say there are going to be reports that you'll never have to use WordDoc again. So just imagine being able to do all the manipulation of you know, images, uh, your own personal commentary, being able to make templates, doing all that within abstract without having to export any data into Word, Doc, or Google Sheets. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, appropriations deadlines coming up, Chris. And, yeah. uh, you know, you've been tweeting about this a little bit. Kind of, how I guess, how many bills do we have coming up in appropes? Uh, not to put you on the spot, uh, about, but I bet you probably know. Yeah. Uh, he no. probably, probably knows. <laughs> I was just looking this morning. Yeah. Uh, the Senate will have about 500 assembly measures and the assembly about 400 Senate measures. So there's about 900 between the two houses that they'll have to deal with. If history is any indication, you know, six, 650 of those will pass to the floor. Mm -hmm. And there's about 360 bills on the floor today. So the current universe is about 1,200 close to 1300 bills that are out there between now and August 31st. And how does that compare with, with history? Is that right in line with a typical end of session? Or yeah. I mean, higher? this year is about, as you know, 2020 was an anomaly. Mm-hmm. They got rid of three out of every four bills. Right. So there was quite a reduction in bills they considered, let alone bills that got to the governor's desk, et cetera. Uh, 2021, they were 
quickly getting back on track, slightly lower, but not by much. This year will be relatively yeah. a normal year, I think. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like we experienced this anomaly this year that I don't really recall where at the, towards the end of June, every committee had like 50 bills. Um, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, sometimes the members and their staff and sponsors, you know, push things to the last hearing uh, and let it delay, be delayed. And so, you know, fun look, the, the real answer is, is fundamentally there are too many bills out there, hmm. you know, and is there a way of consolidating or if not consolidating, you know, reducing the sheer volume. Now, even though we have high numbers, as you well know, a couple hundred at best are mm -hmm. the ones that are actively lobbying right? Uh, or being actively lobbied either for or against or most often both. You know, the vast majority are relatively non-controversial mm -hmm. and move through the process without, you know, much fanfare. Right. But we still have to process quite a few bills out there. So roughly, you know, the original calculation I made two or three years ago, about 40% of all the bills that get introduced get enacted into law in California. Now, I don't know mm -hmm. about the other 49 states, but the U.S. Congress is a roughly three to 5% enactment rate. Wow. So we really enact quite a few yeah. quite of a the few bills measures. that get introduced. Yeah. yeah. So you said there's about 900 bills in, in appropriations right yeah. now. How, ma how many of those do you estimate will be on suspense for the final day suspense hearing? Oh, that's that's about what will be on suspense. Okay. Like yesterday, the Senate Approach Committee moved to the floor about 115 bills mm. under Senate Rule 28.8. Yeah. So those are already out and they're headed and they're on the floor. That's part yeah. of that 360 figure I gave you. Yeah. And, and, it's, and, you know, as on a suspense day, you know, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of like, you know, you are literally in suspense. You're waiting there no, to yeah. see the fate yeah. and you're just listening uh, it's kind of like bingo. You just got to like really pay attention and you're just like <laughs> yes. right now, scratching yeah. it out. Um, Everyone kinda, has their method, right. you know? Yeah. Right. Um, you know, how do you foresee kind of like abstract coming in technology kind of helping with this uh, yeah. kind of quick, quick fire uh, shotgun approach of, of, you know, knowing what's happening and, and well, quickly, <laughs> you know, telling yeah. your members. Well, it's all about alerts, right? Yeah. So instead of email alerts, I mean, this is why the mobile app is important. Also having alerts on your phone, right? Um, <laughs> being able to have alerts set up so that you can tweak. Actually, this is why I want to know when it goes to suspense, but I actually don't care about the other, you know, uh, stages. So customizing those alerts and having them go to where you actually want them, I think is going to be key. And again, this is all automated uh, because the algorithms, but that remind me, there's a, somebody told me about abstract, like it, the, uh, there being more and more bills year over years, like abstract art, no pun intended, uh, where the, the laws and the bills are like the paint. And every year we add like another layer of paint and mm -hmm. the painting becomes more abstract. So to try and make more sense of it, we add more paint, but then it becomes more abstract. So we're just going to, somebody told me, yeah, we're just going to have more and more bills and laws. Right. I don't know if we're going to. we get the paint thinner out, we, we take it out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Oh, we'll never reach really a tipping either. point. I, yeah, I don't know if there's ever going to be one, <laughs> which I think, you know, that's for there. There's going to be more, more and more need to leverage technology to make sense of the code that's becoming more and more complex. Right. And well, layered. I think the more yeah. timely that they can report the actions, the better, because like, uh, you know, when we go to, when you and I, members of the public go to, um, ledge info website, you know, it's late at night or mm -hmm. first thing in the morning that you get the final result. So the more timely that they can make it, right. the more attractive it is ultimately to users. I guess mm -hmm. that's, that's, what's interesting is, you know, with the adv advent of Twitter it seems like you're just getting so much more information on tweets. Uh, Twitter, you'll see either it's the journalists or sometimes you even saw the chairman. They would tweet out mm -hmm. the uh, suspense file and yeah. what made it, what didn't. Sure. Um, how are you utilizing social media? Because as you said, Legend Info mm. might not have it on there for a day or two. Yeah. Uh, I guess, how do you get the quickest available information to kind of send out to your users? Yeah. So currently we are revamping actually our uh, social media uh, tactics such that we're going to be pumping out really relevant information, uh, some of which is coming from Chris McKaylee's depth of knowledge mm. and posting that on social media for people to use, but then also taking the information that our algorithms are, are uh, acquiring and then pumping that out on social media yeah. for people to see. Is, um, is there going to be like a, like a search function, but it'll be called like ask Chris? 
yeah, and maybe. Then like a little yeah, actually, that's avatar. Chris would be there yeah. to explain. Well, we'll have your face on the bottom right <laughs> of the product, <laughs> just like right there. You just, just have to click on. Yeah, it. Yeah, just you click click on the face. And there you go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> That'd be awesome. And there'll be someone for our team fielding those questions. So right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it seems like a lot of my like jumping back and forth is, you know, you're on Legendfo or StateNet or, mm -hmm. or Capital Track. And then you're always over the sacred secretary of state too, looking at elections, looking at uh, financing things. And that like, uh, there any thought of, of, I guess, you know, adding some ca campaign finance functions to, to abstract and kind uh, of things over there as, re as you know, you're looking at ballot initiatives, signature qualifications, things like that. Yeah. So we've been talking to, uh, Again, not nothing. I can't reveal too much, but mm -hmm. you know, thoughts about similar information that we see on Target Book. Um, I think a lot of the information on Target Book is is very useful and could be well integrated into our platform around uh, campaign finances right. and whatnot. Um, so definitely, definitely things we're, we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we are expanding to the local side of things. So we have California State. Uh, policy and legislation that we support, but we're also building out tracking uh, functionality for cities, counties, um, agencies like ports, airports, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. So that's starting to become a secondary focus of ours as we scale. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we want to add regulations. We want to add right. the whole bunch. Um, and then at one point scale beyond California, but we want to make the best tool possible for California first. Yeah, there's so many yeah. uh, regulatory agencies, so yeah. many cities, uh, counties, uh, yeah. How do you, how do you capture that all? Cause that seems like a exciting frontier where yeah. you could have a one-stop shop for, for everything. Let's just say it's a lot of code, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the, the main piece without going too in depth is it's called OCR. Mm -hmm. It's called object character recognition. And so it's this, this algorithm that's able to take all these PDFs or these websites right. and then extract that information, whether it's actual, you know, text or a picture It's able to extract all that. And then the secret sauces and how we process that afterwards. But sure. that's that's how we're we're pretty much scraping all this information from all these websites and documents. Right. Yep. It, it's, it's like interesting, just like if you go to like the courthouse, there's always someone there from some company looking for all the filings of the day. Yep. Exactly. Uh, and then they scan them and put it up in their system. I guess, you know, there's always, I guess, an in-person component of you're going to need people boots on the ground at these local governments or these agencies mm -hmm. getting these documents or letters. Can you kind of speak towards that and about how compiling this information to yeah. put it in an OCR? So method. if essentially before it's actually posted, uh, we're actually developing a separate system for that uh, in terms of, okay, well, uh, let's say there's a hearing, right? Uh, well, the hearing, we can process that video as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So anytime something's broadcasted or printed, that's when we are able to start picking up that information and mm -hmm. then um, go from there. But you're starting to see, you know, I would say it's pretty standard across every city now and also at the state level, everything's digital. Right. Almost whether almost even the original content is digital. So I think that's also part of the reason why we're able to do what we do is we're at a point where people are fully embracing digitization at the government level which allows us to then take that information and then do what we do. Yeah, certainly yeah. the 200 plus state agencies that promulgate seven or 800 regulations a year all post that stuff on their individual mm -hmm. websites right. and all that. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So I guess we're coming to the end of a two year session. Mm -hmm. It's usually when most of our contracts uh, with yeah. various technology providers uh, have to be renewed. Um, kind of what's your, what's your bandwidth for taking more client, more clients on right now? Yeah. Or, I guess, are you guys ready for, for prime time, uh, ready to go? And, and if so, how can, you know, people start signing up and get yeah. more information? I would say, uh, yeah, prime time, September to December is going to be our busiest season. Um, in terms of the product, I mean, the product has been in constant, uh, you know, going through constant updates. It's always going to be updated, which is the beautiful thing. We're not just going to stop innovating one day. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, as being part of a venture capital backed startup, we we're always innovating. So it's always going to be better. Um, so, you know, going to September, uh, we're really excited about what our product is going to be offering with the mobile app and, um, you know, this registered support and opposition search and all the collaboration. So 
yeah, we're excited to take on as many people yeah. <laughs> as, as are interested. Yeah. And, and if, if people listening want to, I guess, find out more information yeah. and learn how to sign up for the product or get a demo, you know, how, how can they do that? Super simple. It's just abstract.us. So abstract, like abstract art.us. Um, and we're, we're happy to, you know, book a demo, do total onboarding, switching, uh, procedures. So if you have a bunch of reports that you use in a Google spreadsheet or capital yeah. track, whatever it may be, we can actually, we have, um, code that we built that can import all that and do that service. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for people to just switch over, get off the ground yeah. and running. And is there any sort of like demo period or free trial period for folks here? Yeah. To so try it out. So we, we've been doing just demos. Um, but if you listen to this podcast and let me know, you listen to this podcast, we're happy to give you a, <laughs> promo, a free code. Trial, promo code, yeah. <laughs> uh, promo code, Chris, Chris McKaylee. Hey. <laughs> Sackdown talks. Yeah, Sackdown talks. There we go. <laughs> uh, we can, we can figure out a free trial if you'd like to try it out. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us guys and talk to us about, uh, abstract and looking forward to checking it out and, uh, seeing how it progresses. Thanks awesome. for having us. All right. Thanks, Thank Chris. you, Jerry. Yeah.